So I'm going to talk to you today about uh, Teradata Creator Grid. We just announced that we have a, a new version. The product is evolving. What we have today in the market is 1.x of, of the product, and we just introduced uh, the next generation, which is Creator Grid 2.0. Uh, just to give you a little background on what Creator Grid is, it's basically if you if you've seen this slide before, where we talk, about, you know, uh, where Gartner describes the logical data warehouse, where in the past it used to be a single platform, and now it's becoming more like uh, multiple data. The, you know, data platforms in, in, in one uh, uh, company, and that's like the nature of, of things. No, no longer one system that can service the whole business. So each unit uh, may have multiple, uh, you know, systems to manage their data. So Creator Grid, basically, why we, do, you know, why is it part of the UDA software or unified data architecture? Because the unified data architecture enables um, multiple systems to coexist and enables these multiple systems to actually work together to solve a customer problem. So for Query Grid, it's, it's basically the grid that connects all these systems together. It enables and empowers you uh, to do uh, like high performing data access, processing and movement across these heterogeneous systems. So you no longer need to uh, worry about integrating systems or dealing with all kinds of data movement so you can just do an, you know, analytics. You should be focusing on, on your customer problems uh, and you should be focusing on, on your uh, analytics and not on data integration. So that's kind of what the sweet spot of Query Grid it enables these functionalities. Just to share with you some of the features, you, know, you can do uh, joins, like if you have uh, some data on Teradata and you have some data on Hadoop and you want to uh, you know, join these two data sets together, you're able to do that with one uh, query. You initiate the query on the Teradata side, and then there's a certain syntax, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, you write that syntax, and it's gonna go get that data. Basically, it's an at sign, like at, and you specify the name of the target platform, and you write your query, and, and then Query Grid knows that this query needs to reach out to that other system and gets that data that you specify. Um, another big feature in, in Query Grid, uh, and it, it's very useful to our customers, which is the push down processing. In the past, you used to have to bring a large data set to Teradata so you can analyze it. You have to do the data conversion so you can have access to that data and then do the analysis. Now, uh, we, we solve this by the push down processing. In, in that logical warehouse I was talking about, um, I have systems that are capable of processing data. Why not ask those systems and push those workloads to those systems and just get the data set that I'm looking for? So you can actually, with Query Grid, push down SQL to the server or to the target platform and filter the data. Push down your aggregates, for example, and just get uh, the data set that you're looking for. So you're bringing back across the network a much smaller uh, data set. And not, not only that, you also do the conversion, which potentially could be expensive on your uh, uh, Teradata system. System, you, you would do the data conversion on, uh, on, on the target platform or, or on the Hadoop system, for example. Uh, so we're kind of uh, managing the workloads in a, in a different way so we can keep that EDW uh, optimized for, for the workloads that you uh, expect for your production data. Uh, you can, again, you know, import data, export data. So these are some of the features that you can do uh, with uh, a query grid. So 2.0, just a, a little brief before I show you uh, a quick screenshot, actually a working demo. I might run a query even. Uh, we, what we have done is in the uh, first generation of the product, concurrency was limited. So we discovered that actually this, you know, because you have data, you have multiple systems, uh, IT and business wants access to that data. So they want more users to uh, be able to leverage that data and do analytics. So we increased the performance and mean uh, of moving that data and processing it, and we increased the concurrency. So you, there, there, are, there were limits in the past, and now uh, you're limited by how many, uh, you know, by your system resources, basically. If you have more systems resources, you can do more uh, queries. Um, queries, uh, connectors are equal now, you can, uh, meaning if you have a connector for your Hadoop system and a connector for your Teradata system, you can initiate the query from either of the platforms. If you're a Hadoop guy and you know you, you usually use, uh, you, you know, you start your queries from Hadoop, then you can still write your query from Hadoop, send data, you know, send the query to, to, Teradata, to Teradata and um, uh, bring back your, uh, the data set you're looking for. Uh, and then we have, you know, some universal features that all the connectors can share. So we have uh, kind of each connector in the past. Uh, am I good? 
each connector, uh, each connector can leverage these features and and use them. That's what, that's what we mean by the universal uh, um, features that are uh, reusable components that every connector can leverage and use uh, to uh, communicate. All right. Let me. The two biggest two pieces that we've added, as well as the monitoring piece and the administration. Uh, a lot of the pain points that our customers were facing is installing the product, upgrading the connectors, or making you know testing the communication between the connectors, uh, finding the IP addresses of all the nodes. So it wasn't it wasn't uh, a sweet or easy installation. So we simplified that a lot, and at the same time we added monitoring. And monitoring in the past is possible, but it used to be possible in the context of I'm monitoring a system using viewpoint, I can monitor my Teradata system or I can monitor my Hadoop system. So, but if you have a query that runs across two systems, you didn't have that lineage, you didn't, you know, you had to dig for it to be able to kind of track that query. So with Creative Grid 2.0, we've built a couple portlets in, in uh, Viewpoint. We basically integrated with Viewpoint where you can administer and track all your queries. And let me show you a few things about that. So I'm going to transition to my uh, Creative Grid. Uh, you, you can, um, you need to zoom in. So, good. So software today, uh, we have something we call the Creative Grid Manager. It's basically as the centralized uh, place where we maintain the configuration, we, have, we maintain uh, the logs of all the systems that interact with the Creative Grid fabric. So software is as simple as when you purchase a connector for your platform, you would receive it somehow from Teradata and then what you would do is you actually upload it to your Creative Grid Manager and that software now exists in, in, in the software repository. Next step, what you would do is you probably set up your networks um, or define your communication policies for your systems, uh, for your connectors, and you add systems. So here I'm showing you I have two, three systems, but I have two defined actually. I have a Teradata system that has one node, and I have a status that tells me it's online. I have a Hadoop system that has four nodes, right? And I install my connectors on those systems. So if I click on my fabric, uh, I create a fabric that actually includes two, you know, my connectors. Like I have a Presto connector and I have a Teradata connector, and uh, I'm able to um, view the connector properties or the connector configurations. In the past, you had to hard code these in the actual, what we call the foreign server. So these were hard coded. Today, they're actually in viewpoint and we're just referencing them, referencing them from uh, the foreign server. We're saying, hey, use these uh, properties when you're actually uh, communicating with the others, uh, uh, with the target platform when you initiate your query. Once you do that and you add your fabrics and add your connectors, then you need to now link them together, right? You need to think of it. You have an initiating connect, uh, uh, connector and you have a target connector. And the way you do this is by building what we call a link. And that link in it, you just define the properties of the, of the connection between these two systems. So you can set here which system is a target uh, initiator system, which system is a target system. You can set some properties and uh, define the network that they will use. Uh, the com and the communication policy. So you can, for example, enable encryption in a communication policy or disable encryption, depending on, uh, you know, if you're going over the WAN or the LAN. Um, and uh, that's that's pretty much it in, in the way, once you do this, then uh, you're, you're able to use this link to define your foreign servers and to initiate a query from Teradata. And that would look something like this. So the query, the syntax is very simple. I'm, I'm, uh, it's uh, it's uh, ANSI SQL, so there's nothing that you need to learn. There's just a little simple um, at sign. And uh, this is the at sign that we used to define, to, re to reference that link we just created in viewpoint that I just sh showed you. So all I'm saying here, um, export this data to Hadoop or to Presto, sorry, right? And then filter it, do some work on it, bring back the results and join it with some data in, in Teradata. So that's all, that's, that's all what uh, we're doing here. So if I execute this query, whoops. Okay. And I go to, the query is running. Now I can monitor that query in the query grid monitoring. I have a query monitor here. If I refresh, 
Sorry. Okay. So this is this is now. If you notice here, this is my initiating system. If I click on it, I'm able to see uh, information about that system. I can see the SQL that was submitted to this initiating system. So this is all the query that we just submitted. Right. I can click on this um, phase or operation and it's actually telling me that it's moving data. It even can report how many rows it uh, moved and what phase is it and if the phase succeeded or not. If I click on the target system, which is a Hadoop system, again, I can see the SQL that was submitted on the Hadoop side. And if I click on the overview, I am reporting some statistics on uh, whatever statistics available on that Hadoop system. We bring that back and uh, make that viewable and available in, in viewpoint. So there is another phase here, which is now I'm exporting the data back to Teradata. And again, if you click on it, you see the kilobytes that were transferred and the number of rows that we sent back to, to ter Teradata. So again, this was not possible before Query Grid uh, 2.0. Uh, you had to go dig for the query in these multiple systems in order to uh, see the simple statuses and see what's, uh, what's happening. So it's kind of, it was kind of difficult. It was like a black box. You write a query and you don't know what's happening. Is the query stuck on the Teradata? side is it taking longer on the Hadoop side what's going on with this feature uh, and this integration with the viewpoint we're able to uh, exactly know what's going on with our query and, and, and optimize uh, accordingly